group of men after the service gather around Brittany to threatening to beat her up? Do you think do you think I'd be beside her to fight on her behalf? Yeah. Okay. What if somebody pulled out a gun? You better shoot quick and you better shoot straight. You better hit me the first time because if I can get to you before you can pull off the trigger, I'm going to do everything I can, as my dad would say, to break out, break off your arm and beat you with the bloody end. My dad would say he's kind of a rough guy. Okay. I would do whatever it took to protect Brittany because, <laughs> carefully, in my life, Brittany has weight. You understand what I'm saying by this? I just mean that what she thinks, who she is, how she feels, her value is high to me. She's, she's protected. Okay, when the Bible says that God is worthy of honor, it's just speaking to the fact of what you already know, that he's worthy of every area of my, every part of my life, my life, my existence. His thoughts, his desires, what he wants. If, if God had whims, he does it. But if God had whims, even the very whims that he would have, those would be important to me. Because he has preeminence in my life and what he desires. So that you can, can you see how this would carry over in every part of my life? I'm not, now forgive me for getting so specific on this. But I'm not going to sit in front of a television for entertainment purposes and allow someone to take my God's name and use it in a vain, trite manner and not have it be a bother to me. For entertainment purposes, that's not what I'm going to let in. It's my, this is, this is God. And He's my God. And He is worthy. And He's worthy of having first place in my life. I'm certainly not going to use His name that way. And I'm not going to invite people in for entertainment purposes to use his name that way either. It's not, it's, this, this is not a pharisaical, let me set up a rule because this is just what I'm supposed to do. This is the natural outflow of the recognition that we serve a God who is God and who is worthy because he is God and he is worthy by his very nature so that I give him the first place, the place of priority, the place of prominence. What he says has more, more, more value to me than what anybody else thinks. Did you know that even in ministry, in what we do, did you know that there's peer pressure? Yeah. Okay. I am friends with a number of, of preachers, just like any preacher would be. I'm, I'm not friends with more preachers than anybody else. I just... I have a lot of preacher friends, and some of my preaching friends have differing opinions about things. Like every one of them have differing opinions about different things, and they all think that they're right. Now, I know who's right and who's wrong. I, of course, have it all figured out, but they all think <laughs> that they're right about different things, and they, they have differing opinions about things. And every preacher that has a, an opinion about something will want to find other preachers who disagree and if they did or agree and if they disagree they'll do their best to convince them about whatever it is to the point where it would be impossible for me to please every preacher that I know by agreeing because if I agreed with one then I'd be disagreeing with another about something and so I have I there are polls, especially when you're a traveling preacher, dependent upon the invitations of other people to come and, and preach. So there's this poll constantly. Okay, so what do you do? Well, the options are you can try to not let anybody know what you really think, or you can not think anything at all and just think whatever the person you're with, or else you can give God first place. And whatever you believe God says, you just stand there and be as gracious as you can to everyone else. Okay, you face it. Every day of your life, you're going to have you're going to have people, place, things, flesh pulling at you. 
to live a certain way, to think a certain way, to act a certain way, to be involved in things where they're saying it's nothing wrong with it, there's, it's all fine, and, and you're convinced that God says something different. Okay, all right. Is the benefit that God can give me, is the blessing from giving God the prominent place, is it, is it, uh, is it big enough, is it good enough that it's worth what I would have to go through if I made a stand for what I believe God says? And that's missing the point. God is worthy Amen. of having first place. Regardless of what I receive or don't receive. If people accept me or don't accept me. Now, I'm not saying be a jerk about anything, but I'm saying you recognize that God must come first. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. And then thirdly, He's worthy of power. That is, He's worthy of your strength, your ability, your body, what, what you have. Hey, after all, God gave it to you, didn't He? I mean, the, the abilities you have, we say, but Tim, God may have given you the abilities you have, but I've worked for what I've had. Well, first of all, that hurts my feelings. Secondly, <laughs> um, even, your, even the abilities you've honed begin somewhere. Are, are any of you not musical at all? Like, you know, even your mom would say, you can't sing. Anybody, anybody <laughs> like that? Okay. So there are, <laughs> there are some people that they just can't. Uh, they, just, they just don't hear different pitches. Is this on Facebook Live right now? All right, then I can't tell the illustration I was going to tell because I don't want it to go out. But there's a certain person I know that sings, and they sing, te oh, terribly. I mean, like nothing. And they're a preacher. And this preacher was um, preaching in a service where I was. And it was his turn to get up to preach. So he stood up to preach. But then he decided he wanted to have a song sung first. So the sound man turned his microphone on. And then he said, hey, Brother Tim, I was leading music at the time. Brother Tim, come and lead this song. And so I came back and I led the song. Well, he was over here and he was singing because he has a joyful heart, and so he was singing for everything that's in him. And you couldn't hear him out in the congregation because everybody else was singing. But on the recording, the only thing you could hear was <laughs> him and me. And you heard more of him than you heard of me. And I heard it, and I almost died laughing just because, okay, all right. Well, who makes you differ from everybody else? Or who makes you differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? <laughs> if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? The point is, what you have, God, God gave to you anyway. Hey, let me tell you something. God is worthy of your life. God's worthy of your body, your strength. <clears throat> uh, of, of you giving yourself back to God and being available for His use. Amen. If you're waking up in the morning and saying, God, hey, I lay myself on the altar. I, I belong to you. I surrender myself. If you want to use me, my tongue, it's yours. My eyes, my ears, my hands, my feet, my abilities, what I have, what I don't have, my, my, my finances and anything that you've given to me. God, it is yours. You do with it whatever you want to do. Or somebody says, well, Brother Tim, if I give my life to God, I mean, isn't there a promise in the Bible about like seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added on. I mean, isn't there a blessing that comes to those who give themselves to God? And I say, yes, yes, there is. There is a blessing that comes to those who give themselves to God. But that's not the point. The point is we give God our bodies because He's God and He's worthy of it. And for all eternity, He will always be worthy. Amen. That's right. Um, if I was getting ready to preach tonight and I stood up here and I said, turn your Bibles to Revelation 4 and all of a sudden through the back door, the door opened and in walks an entourage of people. And a gentleman in a dark suit comes up and he pushes me out of the way and he said something along the lines of, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you the President of the United States of America. Well, regardless of what you think about his policies or what you think about politics, out of respect for the position that he holds, <coughs> we would stand. I, I would stand, and I would clap, 
be, because of the position that he holds, regardless of what I think. I, I, I would have done this four years ago, 12 years ago. Um, how old am I? 25 years ago. <laughs> how much more, or rather, what should our response be then? When someone of insignificance stands before us tonight and says, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you God. Well, it may not cause us to stand and clap, but it ought to cause our hearts, our heads, us to bow and say, you're worthy because you're God. He is and He always will be. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that You would help this truth to sink into our mindset so that every day of our lives and everything that we do, the way that we treat even menial tasks that are done, You said, Father, that whether we eat or drink or whatsoever we do, we're supposed to do all to your glory. I pray, dear Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would help us to remember, to consider, to live by the truth that you are worthy. Help us, dear Father as we consider giving you the glory you're worthy of and the honor you're worthy of and certainly the power of our strength, the strength of the bodies that you've given us. May we give it to you based upon the fact that you're worthy and we know that will never change. Now with heads bowed and eyes closed, just real quickly, I wonder how many tonight would say by an upraised hand, Brother Tim, please pray with me and for me, as you're preaching tonight, God directed my thoughts and He brought to my mind the fact that I've not been living in light of the truth. I've not been living because of the truth that He is worthy. That's just not... I, I've been perhaps living for the praise of other people, doing right things and good things, but because I think it'll benefit enough or because <clears throat> I'll, I'll get enough uh, people that... that like me because of it, or been living my life based on something beside the fact that God is worthy. But tonight I see the importance of having this mindset. And if God will help me, I want tonight to be a turning point in the way that I think, in the way that I live, based upon the fact that He, God, is worthy. If that's true for you tonight, may I pray with you and for you about it? Anybody say, by no praise hand, but Tim, God's dealt my heart about it specifically. Okay, a number of hands. I'll certainly pray for you, and you pray for yourself. Right now, as I pray, would you begin? When I'm done praying, then Brittany will play through a hymn of invitation, and she does right where you sit, right where you sit. Just bow your heart and your head before God, and would you just confess, first of all, His worthiness, and then ask Him to help you to live with that mindset. And as I've suggested before this week, you might find a place somewhere where you'll see it every day on a 3 by 5 card and just put the phrase, <clears throat> Thou art worthy. So that when you wake up, when you get going, the reason why we do what we do is He's worthy. Father, in the name of Jesus, hear the prayers of Your children as they come before You now. Answer according to their request and according to the sincerity of their heart and the faith that they have in you, the one true God. I pray, Father, that you would um, do through us things not possible on our own, but because of who you are. Um, things that only you can do. We love you, Lord. Now again, I ask you to hear the prayers as they come before you. As the piano plays, God dealt in your heart right where you are. Just talk to the Lord about it. Thank you, please.
nothing more arrogant than a person who thinks that their life is theirs and that God is not worthy. Nothing more amazing, more pompous than a person who thinks more highly of himself than he ought to think. But you can't think too highly of God. It's true. Thank you for the message this evening. We need that. And boy, it's one of the uh, basic truths that if you get a hold of, will help you explain anything and everything that God wants in your life. Sure. Let's dismiss with prayer, shall we? Father, thank you so much tonight for the message. Thank you for the book that it came from. And Lord, it's so good for us to lift you up and to bow ourselves down because you're worthy. We want you to have the glory that you deserve. We want you to have the power in our lives that you deserve. And Father, we want to acknowledge this evening that you are the creator of all things and all things that you've created are yours for your preeminence. Thank you for the message. Thank you for the service this evening. I pray that you would continue the work in us that you've begun. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being here. You're dismissed. Mm -hmm.